One late night around 11 p.m., I was anxiously studying for my upcoming finals because my mind became captive to the fear of screwing up my exams. We were given a month to review our lessons. Before this finals, all my other classmates started to review during that first month while my lazy and carefree ass decided to play video games and procrastinate since I feel confident that I have stocked up enough knowledge from our previous lessons. The exams would start on next week and I am on my desk late at night cramming and memorizing every topics without giving it a burl to comprehend everything. If you hadn't been a lackadaisical and an easygoing dumbass, you wouldn't have to study panic and become anxious, I muttered to myself loathingly. When I checked my phone, it was already around 4 a.m. and decided to call it a night and go to sleep since I need to go to work at 7 a.m. I set up my phone's alarm to 6 a.m. so I can wake up at that time and prepare. I woke up to the blaring alarm which pissed me off a little and prepared myself. I did my usual daily morning routine. Make the bed, take a shower, getting dressed, eat breakfast, and brushing my teeth then off to work I went. For the past five days this has become my daily routine. Studying late at night and sleeping late and then going to work looking and acting like a zombie. Eventually this had deteriorated my health so much it had turned me into a snappy an unhinged raccoon which made my loved ones understandably concerned and worry about me. I told them that I was fine and was just a little burned out from stress from too much studying and work while in reality I was just slacking off and not valuing my time very well. One night before the supposed day of our finals, I was doing my usual unhealthy and hasty studying habit but this time I was studying in bed while laying down and reading and scanning my notes since my body ached so much from my irresponsible routine. My eyes were starting to shut down and did my best to fight off the drowsiness. But alas, I was overcome by the tempting beast and fell asleep dropping the notes on my hand onto the floor. Then I woke up and started to survey my surroundings with my eyes. I looked up my digital wall clock and the time was 3 a.m which made my heart pound like a war drum since I know that paranormal activities were active during these times. Then I realized another terrifying thing I wasn't able to move my body apart from my wandering eyes. This only increased the pounding of my heart and tried my best to break off from this terrible trance. I'd heard of sleep paralysis before and this is the first time that it had happened to me before. If I remembered correctly, prolonged sleep deprivation and stress can cause it to happen. Then all of a sudden my closet door began to slowly creak. What was worse is that the closet was directly facing my bed giving me a front row seat to face something nightmare fuel. I saw two clawed shadowy hands emerge from the darkness of the closet which made me sweat bullets and desperate to close my eyes in order to not see the horrible thing. Then the shadowy creature popped out from the closet revealing its towering Terry an emaciated body. What scares me the most were its bloodshot eyes and crescent smile that stretched from ear to ear. Then the thing slowly approached me in a taunting and macabre manner as if it was mocking me for my unfortunate situation. A waterfall of tears began in my eyes and I looked up on my ceiling praying to God to break free from this nightmare. Then I came face to face with the creature looking down at me and made my heart beat as if my blood cells were having a marathon in there. It stared at me for a few moments then it slowly backed away and snapped its fingers and I had regained my ability to move my body and talk again. I gasped for an ocean size air as if I ran around the world. I was expecting for the thing to go away but I was horrified to learn that it was still there sitting at the foot of my bed and it began to talk. Oh, relax bro I was just messing with you. I ain't gonna hurt you it said. I was dumbfounded for a moment until I said, who are you and why are you in my closet? I asked with a trembling and shaky voice. My name is Eidengrau, but you can just call me Ed for short. I live in everyone's closets the shadowy thing said. I tried to compose myself and asked him, why didn't you just take my soul or something? Aren't you like the grim reaper or something? Whoa buddy, I am not here to take your soul or anything Ed chuckled in a friendly manner then continued. I am actually here so I can help you with your problem. Problem? I questioned. I've been watching you from your closet and have noticed 
that you're not spending your time very well at said in a scolding, but friendly way. Yeah, I admit I've become too lazy or responsible with time I said in an embarrassed tone. That's why you're going to get another chance to redeem yourself Ed said in a gleeful tone. Another chance? How is that even possible? I already wasted my one month procrastinating. I asked doubtingly. Let's say I'll manipulate the weather for one week and make it rain cats and dogs Ed said as if he was a businessman making a deal. Are there any exchange? Consequences? I asked fearfully. You don't have to worry about that buddy. All I wanted you to do is make up for the time you wasted Ed said reassuringly. Now you go to sleep and rest so you can feel refreshed in the morning bud. Ed said in a paternal way. After my encounter with Ed, we said our goodnights, and he returned to my closet, and vanished into the darkness. Then I fell asleep on my bed feeling an odd sense of comfort. The next morning I heard a heart, and continuous pitter pattering of the rain. Then I checked my group chat and messenger, and our principal had officially announced that classes would be suspended for one week due to an incoming hurricane. And the good thing is that the finals were rescheduled after the storm has passed. For the following one week, I started to properly manage my time by studying, sleeping early, and cleaning around my apartment with the help from my newfound friend Ed. After those weeks, I feel confident to answer my exams, and after the exams and the test papers were returned, I was ecstatic to learn that I've scored high on every subject. I returned home and knocked on my closet to thank Ed. He popped out and I embraced him as a sign of gratitude. You did great, kid, he said like a proud father with a warm smile.